What is time? It's really just a social construction. All you need is a regular oscillating rhythm that can be linked to the solar cycle. Noon, the time when the sun is highest in the sky, can be used as a reference point. Your watch may be using the oscillating rhythm of a quartz crystal to mark the passage of time. The modern atomic clock tracks the oscillations of the outermost electron of a cesium atom. Your body also tells time using its own oscillating rhythm involving a set of clock chains. This molecular clock is found in virtually every cell in your body. Hi, I'm Dr. Maria Conley, and today we're going to talk about how your body tells time. Any given cell in your body uses a specific set of clock chains to build proteins, which then accumulate in the cytoplasm of that cell before triggering their own destruction in an endless feedback loop that repeats every 24 hours. This is how the cells of your body track the passage of time. Your body uses this predictable 24-hour circadian rhythm to release hormones at specific times, modulate body temperature, and trigger feeding cues. The timing of the cycle affects when you feel hungry, when you have energy, and when you feel tired. As diurnal animals, humans have evolved to optimize muscle performance, feeding behavior, and reaction time during the day when we're awake. The opposite is true of nocturnal animals such as mice and rats. In humans, levels of the stress hormone cortisol peak in the morning around 9 a.m. In mice and rats, levels of the stress hormone corticosterone are highest in the early evening. So right before they're going out to scavenge for food. Circadian clocks have been found in all light-sensitive animals from bacteria to humans. In fact, the first clock gene was discovered in fruit flies in 1971. Different species use different sets of clock genes to tell time, but most use a very similar repeating mechanism called a transcription translation feedback loop. So what are we talking about here? Recall the central dogma of biology. Genes are transcribed into mRNA, and that messenger RNA is then translated into proteins. Imagine a random cell in your body. During the night, the genes clock and BMAL1 activate the transcription of per and cry genes in the nucleus of the cell. The freshly transcribed per and cry mRNA then leave the nucleus and enter the cytoplasm of the cell where they're translated into per and cry proteins respectively. Throughout the night, the levels of these two proteins in the cytoplasm increase. After several hours, per and cry proteins start clumping together to form dimers. The protein dimers move back into the nucleus of the cell where they inhibit their own production in a negative feedback loop. Throughout the day, levels of per and cry proteins in the cytoplasm drop steadily. In the early evening, the cell is triggered to start making these two proteins again. Thus, transcription of per and cry genes in the nucleus is triggered once again, and the cycle repeats itself. This transcription translation feedback loop repeats every 24 hours in most of the cells of your body. Red blood cells, which lack a nucleus, were recently discovered to use a different uh, type of clock mechanism. Your cells use this repeating process of protein production and protein degradation to track the passage of time. Unlike a man-made clock, your bo body tracks protein levels rather than following the oscillations of an electron or a quartz crystal in a watch to tell time. So how do the countless cellular clocks in your body stay synchronized with the day-night cycle and with each other? How do they work together to coordinate hormone production, modulate body temperature, and drive the sleep-wake cycle? These cellular clocks all follow the direction of the master clock in your brain called the suprachiasmatic nuclei or the SCN. 
The SVN is a pair structure of only about 20,000 neurons just above the optic chiasm. The circadian clocks of the SVN neurons use sunlight to fine tune your body rhythms to the changing length of the day throughout the year. So how does this work? You have specialized cells in your retina in the back of your eye called intrinsic photosensitive retinal ganglion cells that only sense the intensity of light entering the eye. This is in contrast with retinal ganglion cells that are able to detect a pattern of light entering the eye and then project this information to the visual cortex to create vision. These cells, the intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, send impulses down their own nerve pathway known as a retinal hypothalamic tract, which goes straight to the SCN of the brain. These nerves release glutamate, an excitatory neurotransmitter, into the circadian pacemaker cells of the SCN. This causes a, um, an increase in the level of calcium inside the SCN neurons. The change in calcium concentration triggers the cellular clockwork of the SCN neurons. In other words, the transcription, translation, feedback loop involving the clock genes, remember this would be clock, BMAL, and PER and CRY, springs into action. The master clock in the SCN can then send signals to other cellular clocks throughout your body via the release of hormones into your bloodstream or more directly via nerve fibers. The SCN acts almost like a conductor of an orchestra, keeping all cellular clocks of the body synchronized with the current day-night cycle and working together to efficiently optimize the performance of your body. The cellular clocks of the SCN are unique because they receive constant and direct input from the retina in the back of your eye about the intensity of light in the outside environment. In experimental conditions, animals that have had their suprachiasmatic nuclei removed are unable to synchronize their circadian rhythm with the day-night cycle. Interestingly, even blind people are able to use these light intensity signals from the retina to synchronize their 24-hour circadian rhythm with the solar cycle. The suprachiasmatic nuclei of your brain use sunlight to sync your hormonal rhythms, your body temperature, and your sleep-wake cycle and feeding cycles with the rotation of the earth on its axis. This is how humans have evolved to maximize their survival while active during the day. Thank you for listening. I hope this is helpful for you.